I'm glad to, to welcome all of you uh, to uh, today's uh, webinar on building effective uh, short-term mission uh, experiences. Uh, I'm thrilled to, to have uh, with me, uh, and you will see us on the screen, um, uh, Karen De Stefano and Milton Yovares. I'll say a little bit about them as well. You'll also see uh, just a blank name of Andy Lewis on there because he's actually hosting this here from the North Texas Conference Office. Uh, Andy directs the Center for Missional Outreach for the North Texas uh, Annual Conference, as well as uh, being the assistant to Bishop uh, Michael McKee. Uh, Andy is also my direct uh, supervisor in the work that I do here. So he has a personal interest in, in this, but he also is the tech control guy uh, but we're glad to have uh, have Andy with us today uh, in the background. Um, uh, we were to have a third participant in in today's event, um, Ev uh, Reverend Evan Jones from Dallas First United Methodist, but a family emergency took him away, uh, and um, he's just uh, apologized for that and also requested prayers for him, his wife especially, and for their family as they navigate uh, some uh, health issues uh, that have arisen. Um, Karen De Stefano, who you see on the screen, uh, is our South Central Jurisdictional Coordinator for VIM and Disaster Response. Uh, she's also a colleague of mine from years back in Oklahoma, where she worked in our Office of Mission uh, and just a good friend and supporter in mission over many, many years. And, uh, we've been to various places around the world and around the United States, so it's good to connect with Karen in this way. Uh, Milton Yavaris um, has a, a connection uh, to the North Texas Conference, uh, especially uh, he is the uh, UMVM coordinator for the Honduras Annual Conference, and between North Texas and Honduras, we share a bishop. Uh, our bishop uh, here in North Texas is also the bishop of the Honduras uh, Annual Conference. Uh, and so there's a very strong partnership and covenant relationship between our two conferences. Uh, but Milton doesn't just work with North Texas. He works with many other conferences uh, in encouraging and supporting um, uh, the work of UMVM uh, uh, across our denomination. So I want to welcome the two of them. Uh, to joining this conversation. Uh, uh, I am currently uh, employed here in North Texas in a part-time capacity as the disaster response and UMVM coordinator uh, for North Texas. Uh, and uh, as many of you might know, I served for many years in a similar capacity, directing the Office of Mission for the Oklahoma Annual Conference for some 15 and a half years. So um, uh, uh, we're gonna have a conversation, the three of us for the next uh, uh, 25, 30 minutes or so. And, and then we're gonna open it up uh, in the, in the Q&A uh, that uh, you see on the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you want to contribute a question, um, feel free to go to, uh, to that. Uh, uh, the hosts uh, and the panelists can see the questions. Um, and uh, when we get to that time, I'll pull it up on the screen and we'll continue the conversation. Um, so, Karen, if you wouldn't mind starting us off, just to briefly share something of your experience with what we're going to call today short-term missions as opposed to VIM. We're going to use the generic term because it takes many shapes. Uh, and I don't want us to think VIM is just this or that, uh, but we're talking about short-term missions. So your experience of short-term missions. Well, I have oh, I been have... quite a few places in the U.S. and Latin America with short-term missions. And I, I'll have to say that um, short-term mission is um, response is, is why I came back to the church. And so um, I had been away for a while after moving off to go to college and grad school, and I was invited to go along on a on a mission to Guatemala as an interpreter. And um, that experience brought me back and maybe not immediately, but it did eventually. And so I'm a, a firm believer in 
these types of experiences. Uh, I know there's a lot to do still uh, with this type of experience, but they are important. And so that one has always um, that, that that has always stuck in my mind. And I eventually became a team leader, certified team leader in Oklahoma, and then um, uh, went on on multiple journeys. Um, and each each one special in its own way. So um, experience has been good, and I and I have been also enjoyed helping others to discover this type of experience. Which is what you're doing as the jurisdictional coordinator, I know, right yeah. now. Yeah. Milton, tell us about your experience with short-term missions. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of it where you've been in charge of receiving teams into your country, but you tell us your story. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, thank you for um, having me here today. Um, yes, there's a, a, quite a lot um, of mission trips that I've been um, hosting and also that I've been part as um, staff, like interpreter or just assisting, like which was kind of like my first steps when I started doing mission. Um, of course, that was in Honduras and then um, outside the country into other countries um, so but it's definitely um, a privilege and honor to be serving in my country because i was actually outside serving as Anvim coordinator for um, guatemala and the bahamas and then came back to um, honduras in, in into that role so it was quite a surprise and, and a blessing to be serving um, in a country that you all know um, has a lot of needs um, that it we feel like we do a lot but then when we see the result it's like we need we feel like we need to do more <laughs> but um, that kind of keeps us encouraged and and just motivated to keep doing what we're doing here great Great, thank you. Um, in all that experience, Milton, uh, is there one you can think of right now that was a highlight and why particularly it was a highlight experience for you? Um, yes, well, of course I have lots of- oh, I'm sure there, there are lots, yes. Highlights, <laughs> but um, back when I was um, starting my uh, mission journey, um, I was, First of all, I was 14 when I did my very first mission oh. trip. Uh -huh. um, and I was part of the a, a team that came to, to the community where I was living at the moment, um, asked for translators. So my, my mom kind of like decided for me that I was going, even though I did not want to go, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it was not optional. And so I think like the very first trip that I did was life-changing um, and it's kind of like what it was the seed that was planted for me to be here today uh, and I always go back to that day when uh, I kind of like saw a different reality of the reality that I was living as a kid uh, that maybe had a little more than than the other uh, kids in in the country and so when I was exposed to that, it was just like eye-opening and it was just, yeah. I came back home and I just wanted to get rid of everything that I had, like my clothing, my toys, my <laughs> shoes, like everything. Cause I, I, I've never seen like so many kids uh, barefoot, um, mm -hmm. undressed. I mean, it was just hungry saying like stories like they haven't eaten in days. Right. Like all those things for me, it was just like, mm -hmm. like I was just, I felt like I was in, in another country even though I, I wasn't a traveler by then, but I, I, I wasn't sure that I was in my own country seeing those things. So right. that was kind of like the highlight back then. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Karen, same question to you. I, I'm i going to switch that up a little bit and say there's not this one particular uh, experience, but one particular site. Mm -hmm. And that is um, a place in Albuquerque called Casa Esperanza. And it's like a Ronald McDonald house, but for cancer patients. And um, we, I took a team there over about nine years. We went nine times in eight years, I think. And I think for me, 
the highlight was the evolution of our of our time there and where we went from just doing things like deep cleaning the toy room mm. to developing friendships and relationships with um, people there. And even though it wasn't always the same people, the staff that work there became like our family. And so that, that to me has always been kind of my ideal um, that I strive for now when planning mission is mm. that type of, of connection with the people that we went to serve alongside with. Okay, yeah, great. Now, I'm sure there've been along the way, uh, the reality checks of the other side of that coin where mission experiences have been challenging or frustrating or not what we had hoped them to be. Try mm -hmm. to identify just maybe, you know, a key uh, thought around that and uh, help us understand why maybe it went off the rails or didn't quite achieve what we would have hoped for. Karen. Okay. Yes, I do have one uh, that comes to mind. And um, I think the, the breakdown in what went wrong, there were, it was my first time to lead an international mission. So I wasn't experienced. And looking back, I think what would have made all the difference was just more communication um, with my team members and with the site host, or at least the VIM coordinator in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and every time that there has been any type of issue on another, another team at another place, it has always come back to lack of communication or not consistent or just not enough communication mm -hmm. and, and relationship building, mm -hmm. not necessarily with the site, but among our team members and preparing them for the journey. And so I think that would be, that would be where I've had the, the biggest challenge and right. hopefully have learned a lot from it. Communication is something we'll speak about over and over again in, in the course of this, I'm sure, and that our, uh, our viewers today will understand as being a key component. Uh, Milton, uh, anything you want to point to in terms of an, a challenging experience of mission or teams coming into you uh, that uh, you can identify? Yes. Um... Probably a challenge, not that I'm, I want to throw anyone under the bus, but no. um, <laughs> we can be open <laughs> with one another today. <laughs> but uh, when I first got to, when I was actually set, um, located in the Bahamas, I was like, of course, it was my very first time in the Bahamas. Um, I didn't know a lot of like, I mean, I kind of like knew what the UMBIM role is in general. But I didn't know like exactly what was my role in the country and with teams and interaction and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the day that I arrived there, um, and I probably had like two meetings with the people that I was going to be working with. Um, when I arrived there, there was no one like the director had left um, of the organization, like he, I don't know, resigned or something. Um, and there was just like one person that was that used to be a volunteer in 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 the place and so I was just like figuring things out <laughs> and I had yeah. a, a team that was coming in like five days after I arrived for the first time there so it was like very challenging uh, lots of reading like just read right, emails right. and on the computer how things were done who to contact for these or that so the stress was really really high but at the same time it everything came out um, well uh, the team was very happy. The team that 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 went on that on that mm -hmm. trip, mm -hmm. and um, so I feel like it was successful. But yes, on on a, on my side, it was extremely challenging. <laughs> I, I I can understand that, and I think what you're doing is underlining for us the importance of organization, mm -hmm. uh, of logistics, of proper preparation, uh, and you know throwing you into <coughs> that thing so close to that. Uh, 
is unfortunately often part of both sides of, of the short-term mission experience because of just <clears throat> the way things unravel <clears throat> or never properly ravel. Is that a word? <laughs> they don't come Over. together. Uh, never mind being undone is what I, you know, yeah, I've used the word right. unravel, come to think of it. I've never used the word without the <laughs> UN in front. Anyway, um, so, so with that in mind, with the fact of the complexity and, and some of the challenges of mission and the organizational stuff and, and all the rest of it, uh, Milton, there's a, a very strong opinion across the United States and outside as well uh, in the countries that a lot of our short-term missions go to that says, this really isn't working. It's not, it's not helpful. Uh, it's, it undermines uh, the local peoples and their autonomy and authority. Uh, it's hand out and not hand up. Uh, you know, it's uh, colonialism in disguise, uh, imperialism again, and it just needs to stop. Uh, what do you say to those who think that short-term missions should simply stop? I will say um, a big no to that, <laughs> because uh -huh. seeing it from my side that I receive teams and I kind of like help to connect or serve as a bridge within the team and the community or church or what, whatever um, side on, on that they're not coming to work with. Um, I see in most cases, happiness, uh, growth, uh, development. And I think it's just knowing how to do it, doing it right. Because of right. course, like if, if it's not done right, it can create or cause some harm. But um, so the thing is just knowing how to do it. And it goes back to communication, uh, knowing um, what it's gonna be done, how it's gonna be done, knowing the reality or at least learning of the reality where the team is going, how things are, are managed there, respect the host um, opinion or whatever. Might Not that the host always have the, the right opinion or anything, but it's, like I say, it's crucial to have that um, healthy back and forth relationship. But definitely like, I don't feel like it needs to stop because um, okay. in, in countries like Honduras, for example, um, people get really excited um, just by seeing someone coming to visit, not necessarily bringing gifts or anything, just the fact that that person came and, and was there and, and laughed and, and had a coffee or something with that person that just made, made that person's day or week. So whatever project or anything that it's given, it's, it's, a, it's an extra, it's a plus, but what really matters is the relationship, um, the bond that, that it's done between the, the community and, and the team that comes. Great, thank you. Karen, how would you respond to those who say it's fatally flawed and needs to stop? Well, actually the first thought that came to my mind when you were saying, asking that was, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh -huh. um, sure, is there room for improvement? Yes. Are there things that have been done in the past that were not good? Yes. That doesn't mean you just stop. It means that you work to make it better. And I think the experiences like Milton has pointed out, like the ones that I've seen and experienced, those are too valuable. Um, and they're, they're so needed today. The way that people, this opportunity for people to connect with other people not, you know, never mind the task of building a wall. Of not, I don't like that phrase. Okay, building a house or, um, uh, you know, doing a vacation Bible school, whatever. That's not why we do short-term mission. And that's not why we should do short-term mission. So, uh, no, we need to find new ways that will empower people, uh, will be more inclusive of all people, um, from all walks of life, from all corners of the globe, to be involved with each other uh, in in the experience. So it's too important. So uh, thank you. Um, uh, and you know what you're underlying uh, underlining is uh, you know consistent with the uh, with the theology of the United Methodist Church, uh, particularly, but but also broadly of Christendom. 
um, th that uh, you know puts us in relationship with, in connection with, as part of this kingdom, uh, this ex <laughs> expanded family. We belong to one another. Uh, you know, we we obviously in this as we head towards Christmas, celebrate again the incarnation uh, of God amongst us, uh, and so that incarnational presence uh, is is underlies all of this. Um, so just to push it a little bit further, uh, some would say to you, Milton, uh, we're not going to come and disrupt your country or your people or your you know, your, your community, we're just going to send you some money. Would you take the money and not the people? Uh, you know, uh, is that enough? Uh, it's not uh, enough. enough. I will say we will take it, um, especially after COVID. Like, You're right, yes. <laughs> we had like um, really <laughs> lack of resources. Um, but yes it's 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 part of it it's important it's an important part but it it's not the main reason of of why we do this or stuff because like i said it's it it's the bond that it's it's been created not just on on the host side but also on the people that comes um because it it's making an impact both ways like we might see our side because of course we stay here but we don't know what changes or what impacts uh, the whole um, mission uh, it's doing on the volunteers that came also. They, they're they living uh, their reality and the trip might help understand some struggles that they're going through, issues, whatever. Um, so an eye opener like it was in my case. So, and I, I, I would say Yes, we'll take the money, but it's not the right the main right. reason of, of why we do this. Right, right, right. So let's focus for a few moments then on what is it that makes a good mission experience? What uh, what is it that allows this um, you know recruiting, forming, preparing a team, coming to another country for a period of time and then going home or back? A home again, a worthwhile experience. What what are the fruits of 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 these short term mission experiences that we should uh, think about, anticipate, and and plan for? Uh, Karen, you want to throw some ideas in? Yeah, um, I think that um, the the value of the short term mission and what makes it a good experience is when we help people. So I'm, I'm going to talk from a team leader or a recruiter point of view um, is when we help people find their why and their passion and help them discover their gifts that God has given them and allows this allows them an opportunity to see that firsthand and to feel this connection. And I think if we don't do that as our very first step in planning and recruiting, that we're going to miss a lot of opportunity to make this the most successful mission journey that we can. Um, there are other factors as well. Organization, I think you mentioned earlier, and having good communication with your site host. But if people don't understand why it is that they're going and what it will mean, it's not a trip. It's not a vacation. You know, this is, um, I always liked your phrase, Jeremy, uh, vacationers and personating missioners. This is not why we're going. Some people just want to go on a trip and want to get another stamp in their passport. That is not what makes a good mission journey. It's discovering why and mm -hmm your passion and empowering people to make change, not only where they've been, but also back home when they get, when, when they return. Right, so you're distinguishing, as I hear it, between, uh, between the tasks that might happen uh, and, and, the, and the greater purpose of, of mission. Mm -hmm. Tasks are limited to while we're there and they might vary from mission to mission, but you're right. pointing to a larger purpose in, 
really discipleship, right? In 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 our right. own faith journeys on both sides, right? Of that equation, yes. Yes, and the, you know the task may not even exist when you get there, when you get off the plane or or get out of the car. It might have changed while you were in, in route. Um, <laughs> might have disappeared altogether, but um, it's it's why you're going and why we serve and it's the people and it's the one being one in the body of Christ. Right. Um, right. Milton, what would you add to that in terms of what uh, uh, makes for a real partnership in mission? Um, I'll say, for example, the way that I see it and um, or I, that I practice it as a host, it's also letting the spirit flow. Um, not that we won't have a program or that we won't have an itinerary for the week or a schedule, but not being so squared, like to get out of the box what, what presents on, along the way. Um, I feel like most of the, of the trips that we've done when something presents or something gets on the way and we see it instead of like getting frustrated or upset or or something and we take it to god and say like why this is happening um i don't understand it but it's not a surprise to you then i feel like the biggest things that has happened to us in mission has occurred from from those obstacles that shows up on the way Right. And I can give you multiple examples, but um, but yes, uh, I mean, in the medical area, mm-hmm. uh, patients that showed up when we were probably like already, um, the clinic was already down or stuff like that. And, and that changed um, that person's life um, and mm-hmm. actually saved that person's life. Mm-hmm. If we if we weren't wouldn't be there, that person probably would have died. Or some like when you see those things, it's like there's a reason of why these happen, like yeah. why we had a flat tire or and stuff like that. So it's the way we see things and how we we take it. You're you're talking about flexibility. You're talking about mm-hmm. openness to the spirit leading in different right. directions, and you know the the, the sort of um, uh, you know simplistic but but uh, I think a helpful statement of. Uh, a short-term mission movement through the United Methodist Church is that there's three rules. Rule number one is be flexible. Rule number two, be flexible. And rule uh-huh. number three, under all circumstances, be flexible. And I think right. what you're doing is underlining the fact that uh, as much as we plan, as much as we prepare, God has a unique encounter for us there that we simply need to be open to. So uh, just because it's important to learn from, uh, you know, uh, bad experiences, it is from good experience to reflect on everything. Uh, can either of you identify uh, specific things that maybe have created that blockage to, uh, uh, to meaningful uh, uh, experiences of mission? What is it that makes it harder for a team uh, to to succeed. And, you know, Milton, I can just take your statement and put it in the negative, in that if you are not flexible, things might not happen the way that you would like them to. So mm-hmm. beyond that, um, are there other things uh, either of you might want to point to uh, as uh, unnecessarily creating blockages in mission? Uh, Milton? I'll say safety, for example. Uh, uh, team safety. I think uh, as a host, of course, um, we try to take care of teams as much as possible. Like I would say like one of our top priorities is for the team to be safe. Um, not like over like protection or stuff like that. Because other, of course, uh, otherwise th- the reality will be missed. But yes, doing things with precaution, I do a lot of uh, research, uh, like what's going on in the community, um, right. health-wise. Before I go to a restaurant with a team, I like I make sure like how how meals are prepared, like all that kind of stuff. Because in the end, like if if something happens, which I mean we're it's we're exposed, so uh, yeah. things can happen, um, or somebody fell. We've had like those type of things. So 
I feel like, for example, insurance is really important. Otherwise, it can be a nightmare right. um, in the right. country. And I've had um, a few uh, of those um, things happen, like emergencies and stuff. And, right. Right. and so that kind of like takes you away from, yes. from yes. what you really want to right. accomplish. So I think like safety, it's, it's yeah. just listening to the host, for example, um, like what happened in Haiti right. not too long ago like stuff like that like that's something that i wouldn't even want to think that can happen here like it would be right. just a mess so right. in right. safety you know in all aspects and i think you've highlighted for us milton the issues where some of the most significant things go wrong uh, mm -hmm. is when that is when that uh, respect for the leadership in country for our safety does not take place where their insurance is not been thought through to cover the individuals in the event of both medical uh, and and societal disruption, um, right. <clears throat> where you know there needs to be an evacuation, but that hasn't been thought of, uh, and so uh, that really underlines that. Karen, what do you want to add? Sorry, it's on mute. Uh, I would just reiterate the um, the fact that lack of preparedness um, and lack or yeah, lack of open-mindedness or have, going in with a set agenda or a fixed agenda in your mind anyway, or stereotypes. I think uh, that has played some of the biggest or has led to some of the biggest obstacles. Um, people think things should be one way and it's not, and they don't understand why it can't be or, or is a certain way. Um, Milton pointed to um, like insurance. I mean, all this, it goes into careful planning. Um, so that the team leader definitely needs to plan. The team leader also needs to work with their team. Um, I think um, going forward, I haven't led a team for a while, uh, mostly because of COVID and, and, uh, and just some other things that had come up. Going forward, I would definitely um, work with my team. I know of a church in Oklahoma, Boston Avenue, United Methodist, that they would have year-long meetings with their team um, once a month for a year. Uh, and I can't imagine the difference that that makes for the overall success. I don't call it success, but the overall mission experience. And I, I think that's just, it all goes in, in together with, with that planning, uh, insurance, and um, going in with an open mind, being flexible. Thank you. Um, let me just say to those who are participating at the moment, if you have questions at this stage and you would like to, uh, you can phrase it as a comment, you can phrase it as a question, uh, please go to the Q&A. Um, we can see those on our screen and I will facilitate the discussion uh, uh, with that for the for the rest of our time together, which should be about another 25, 30 minutes is what we're uh, planning to do. Depends on the length of those questions. But <clears throat> as you prepare to write those and make your comments or, or questions, um, let me just continue the uh, discussion with, uh, with Milton and, and Karen to say, let's get back to, uh, let's first get back to this relationship issue. Um, I think you've underlined for us that mission is a mutual experience. Uh, in other words, it's not just for the people who go to do something and gain something. Uh, it's not just for them to give something so that the other side benefits in some material way, uh, possibly. Um, but uh, there's something that's happening uh, that you've been describing that enriches our, our understanding of our faith journey and makes the deeper connections. So how do, we, how do we make sure we build time in and focus in for relationships to develop in the mission experience? Milton? Um, I would think, or as at least from what I've seen, it's just staying in conversation, staying in touch. Um, for example, in my case, I've made, my best friends over um, mission teams um, 
that I've met, people that I met like when I was 15 or so, 16. And up to today, we still talk, we visit each other, we travel. And um, I mean, we've gone through, of course, uh, throughout those 20 plus years, lots of things have happened and, and we've been there for each other and, and stuff like that. So that kind of like happens also with teams and something that I've enjoyed, it's like seeing those solid, healthy relationships of teams that say like, I've been coming for the last 15 years and, and you see the progress, you see how they started, um, all the ups and downs they've gone through and they still decided <laughs> to stay um, and, and just continue building that relationship. And like Harry was saying in the beginning, when things don't go like as planned or goes wrong, don't just quit. Like it's just see how can we do it better um, and just identify what happened and talk it through and, and continue the relationship. So staying in touch, it's, it's a key um, for like solid long-term relationships that develops through short-term. So Milton, thank you for that. I see the first question that has come um, is that given the importance of building relationships, do you plan and recruit with an understanding that maybe uh, it may be or should be a multi-year commitment as opposed to what, just a one-off hit and run kind of a thing? Is that what you're implying there? Uh, yes and no. It's not like if you come, you have to come from right. now on until the end of your days. No, but it it goes again to just let the spirit flow. Like if the spirit tells you go again, then yeah, please go. But um, just be open to that. Like if if yes. if you feel like going again, then then just go. And if not, then something will will. You, you will be taking something, I'm sure, from that place back to, to your daily routine and, and there some seed will be planted. <laughs> right, right. Karen, what do you want to add to that? Well, from firsthand experience, I would say that going multiple times to one location is, it's an incredible experience over time. Maybe we didn't start off thinking, oh, we're going to keep going back to Albuquerque. It just kind of worked out that way. And then after that, it was like, we don't want to go anywhere else. We want to go here because we feel like we're going to visit our old friends. We feel like we're going to, um, um, you know, continue on their mission. And we just wanted to be a part of it. So, but of course, you know, going to a new place gives you new experiences. Um, you meet new people. So there is a trade-off and, but they both have their, their positive sides, their positive aspects. But I tell you, building, going multiple times and building that relationship is just makes, it, it takes mission, your mission journey to a whole nother level. Right. And, and I, I, I want to just underline the point that a number of you folk who are on the call today are involved in covenant relationships with places as I identified at the beginning North Texas conferences with your uh, annual conference Milton so it might not be the same people every time but there's a continuity uh, mm -hmm. and, and a trust from the people side in, in Honduras that you know, North Texas is going to come back again. It might not be exactly the same North Texans, right. um, but there's something that says there's a commitment here um, and uh, a, a relationship that's going to be ongoing. Um, let me ask you to sort of build on that because if, if it's a relationship, it needs to be mutual. Uh, so how do we get out of just this mindset that it's one group coming and doing something for another group and that's the level of what happens uh, year by year by year or whenever a team comes? How do we build that as a truly mutual shared relationship? Karen, you got any thoughts there? Well, I would say be in communication with the site um, and asking, um, you know, what, what are their goals? What are what are the gifts that they also bring to the table? And working with them 
on that. Um, I, I think that we should be working um, almost like assistants to the people at the site. We're just helping them accomplish their goals. We're not coming in to do it for them. And, um, and their goals could change and we, we should be flexible enough to work with them. But this, you know, this is a way to help empower um, not just our mission team members, but the site, um, not that we need to be the ones to do that, but it's a way of everyone finding their power, their gifts, and what they, they themselves are able to do. Thank you. Milton? Yeah, um, I'm as Carol was speaking, I was remembering um, uh, an experience that we had one time with a team that came to build um, a well, kind of like a, a a room, like a classroom, and um, the team had no like experience on construction or stuff like that, but they kept coming to build that, and then when it finally, well, almost when it was almost done, the whole thing just fell down, like oh. just went <laughs> into pieces. And instead of like people like crying for for that thing that happened, everybody would just laugh. I mean, it was like, because what, what else do you do? Like, and so like the, the joy that you could like breathe or perceive, even when it, it, it should have been a tragedy of what, what happened, but people just like, laughed and like they were just i mean of course they hired someone that knew uh, yeah, how to do yeah, it and right, and and right. ended up doing the the room but it's it just it builds up like that those things uh, in terms of relationship right uh, right, right on, on the right. long run so and also like identifying um what the community kind of like, like the context of the community yes, and, yes, yes. and what the local partner wants to achieve, what are their purposes, and how can we come in and join you on, on that process instead of saying like, well, then you need to do this and you need to do that, and then you leave, but then you leave the person or the host with a big trouble or a big problem right. that that host is not going to know how to move forward with, and then it just stays there and it's right. abandoned. And so... Right. That that in on the long run that creates more harm than than good. So right. it's just right. understanding that you're um, just walking with that person or that yeah. host or that community um, in the process. And Milton, that sounds to me like there's the need to be very culturally sensitive mm -hmm. uh, to your context. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. What, what, what are some of the mistakes or blindnesses in this area that, that you've encountered? Uh, probably like, I don't know if, if there are mistakes or what, but starting from like, I don't know the, the I won't say generally, but most of the Honduran um, culture or people, it's, it's very sensitive to certain topics or very close-minded to other things. And so when they see, for example, something that it's, it's not what they're used to see, then it, it might be taken the wrong, the wrong way. So that's why it's also good to have like um, conversation about best practices within the community when we go out there. Not that we're faking who we are, it's just we don't want to offend them or or do something that it's out of exactly. out of place or or taken exactly. the wrong way so exactly. yeah so it's it's except for example on the medical field um i've experienced for example a lot of um females that are not too open to speak with a male doctor uh -huh. so it, i try to like make it um flexible and and have like a female doctor for a female patient mm -hmm. and right. stuff like that. Right. Uh, because otherwise we're not doing things or I feel like we're not doing the, the, the things the right way if we're not really going to attend that person's issue because yeah. she won't speak about it 
or yeah. especially if it's something really intimate, like yeah. she will rather just say like, I'm here for a headache and, and right. be gone instead right. of speaking about what really is going on. And you want to help that person, but yeah. so it's, it's a matter of doing it right or right. finding that, that way of doing it right. right. Karen, you want to add anything? Yes, um, I. this is part of our team preparation and, and preparing our team members to what they will encounter if they've not ever been there before. Um, and it's also highlights the, the or reinforces the idea that we really need to be in communication with our site host um, to find out these things that are important that they want us to know. And to make sure that we're fighting stereotypes and misconceptions before we go so that we don't have these embarrassing encounters when we do go. And, um, you know, oh, I didn't know they ate that for breakfast. I don't want that. I want, you know, pancakes and French toast or, or whatever. And um, just make sure that everyone is aware of, of what what they're going to be seeing and experiencing. Right. Yeah. I, I remember a colleague of mine years ago saying in a very different context, but I want to apply it here, is that what I wish for every missioner is a sense of curiosity. And I love that because it doesn't set answers. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't narrow the thing to this is the skill that you must know. But it, it says, ask the questions. Just always be curious about why things are the way they are and be open to asking. Because Milton, I, I, I've never seen a situation where the hosts in your side of the things have never been willing to explain, right? <laughs> I mean, you don't take questions the wrong way. It's, it's the assumptions, correct? Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why we're here, I guess. Yeah, so right, like right. Share that um, cultural uh, context and stuff. And just like as an example, for example, things like um, that I try to tell or share with the teams, it's the um, like the meal, for example, it's going to be like, of course, we ask like if there's allergies and, and right. stuff like that. But how what the meals are going to be like, or we're all eating the same thing and stuff like that. And, and try to like, grab what you're really going to eat and then yeah. if you want more then go go again but so we don't throw food to waste because yeah. culturally it's like that's not taken the right way when when for example the cooks see that you're throwing away food right. or stuff like that right. they they i mean especially like in the reality that we live like <laughs> it's right. like something that you don't want to to send a wrong message and it, you might not be doing it because you want to offend it just it's just the, something that happens the simple prayer on that one that one of our missionaries in 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 oklahoma taught us was where he leads me i will follow what he feeds me i will swallow <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> right karen you wanted to add something yeah one thing um that we can do um ahead of time to to learn the cultural issues, the sensitivities, to get to know each other is something that we came up with during the pandemic was to do a virtual mission experience. Yes. Um, yes. As, as the pandemic has evolved and we now, you know, teams are starting to travel again and, and everything does not have to be 100% virtual anymore. We still see the virtual mission uh, and that type of encounter as an important tool in preparing teams to go. And this way they can start to, um, uh, this, the site can, can make their presentation to let us see what, um, what we'll be experiencing. It's also a way to get to know people and to start to build those relationships before we even go. Yeah. So that, that's one thing that we can do. And um, I, I was on a virtual mission with Milton and learned a lot about the culture of Honduras and what the sites were like and really appreciated that. And yeah, I feel like I've kind of almost been there already. Yes, yes. And, and you know, just to highlight this, what you're saying, which I, I like from both of you, is the internet has given us creative ways 
to build relationship and continue mission, both prior to the actual mission event, uh, during it in terms of contact back home, uh, maybe being you know, Skyped into a Sunday morning service while you're away with your home church, uh, and then afterwards to stay in contact and to keep those relationships flowing uh, without uh, you know, actually physically being there. So all of that is, is incredibly helpful. Thank you. Um, John Benson asked a question a little while ago, and I, I didn't want to interrupt the flow to get to it, but when we talk about the long-term uh, relationship, he raises the point that sometimes repeat missions become the mission themselves of those people, and you know they don't want to let other people in, or uh, you know it becomes a closed group. So he's asking us to think about how do you prevent that from happening. I have had that experience, and um, uh, I wish I had a really great answer to give. But I do recognize that it's a problem. I think um, I, in in our case, when we arrived at the at the location at our mission site, everyone just jumped in and started doing the the tasks or the jobs that they had always done every time we went. I think um, just shaking that up a bit and saying, "Oh, I'd like you to maybe work over here or whatever." This is where the team leader can come in and and really help out um but yes there there is that danger of of it becoming kind of a closed group and we we have to work against or we have to to work with that issue all the time even if it were a, a, a beginning group and it's the first time they'd been together and the first time they'd been to a place they can still form groups within themselves so we just have to work on on that team dynamic and um, making sure everyone recognizes everyone else's gifts and talents and what they have to offer. Milton? Absolutely. I agree with that. And um, I think one of the ways that we can either, well, not maybe prevent or break that cycle, it, I mean, shaking things a little bit, um, of course, you always have the, the pros and cons and how that's going to turn. Um, but also putting it in, a, seeing it in from all type of perspective, if the situation, it's been helpful or if, if it's been effective uh, as it's being done. And if it's not, then just speak it out with the team, team leader and, and the community and bring that's one of the things that, for example, that I tried to to do. It's involve the the local host because I might be the host for the whole dynamic of the mission trip, but of course the community also has a host, or the church where we go has a host, or and all those things. So I tried to bring them in and share their experiences or feedback how the week is going. Um, if you have anything to add. And so that gives a, a little bit of openness of things to prevent to get to that point. But um, in like, again, it's because I have like, for example, the medical teams, normally they, they come and they know what they're gonna be doing. Um, they know how to prescribe, where they're gonna be located at. Um, they already have the setup as it's been for the last 12 years, 15 years. And so like, Things like that, for example, like I don't see any harm, but yeah. if it's if if it's causing some a level of harm, then I think it's speaking with with all of the people involved, uh, or right. if yeah. there's a leadership team, and explaining the situation in with politeness and uh, just a friendly conversation, and I think that that's really helpful. And I think from what both of you said, it leads us back, does it not, to the purpose of mission. The purpose of mission is not to give eight or 10 or 12 people who go on a team an experience of mission. It's, it's a call for that congregation um, or congregations that are involved uh, to broaden their experience and understanding of God at work in the world outside of their local community and connecting us with the global family. And so that intentionality of, of recruiting and inviting and seeing beyond just your own efforts and your own task is what I think you're underlying there 
uh, underlining there as an important facet for us. We have one more question here uh, that I see on the screen about somebody who wants, quote unquote, to go on mission, but does not want to participate in the training sessions for mission. How, how would you handle that, Karen? <laughs> well, I might have to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, chat with, with the person to find out why it is that they don't want to be included in the in the team trainings you know they're the team training or the team meetings are not you know I've, I've been to some where it's just oh we're going to fill out these forms and we'll say a prayer and we'll go home and we'll see you at the airport um but there there's so much more that goes into this um <clears throat> I think I would just have to have a, a, a conversation with this person to find out what what it is that is, you know, makes them not want to be a part of this. Milton, anything you want to add there? Um, well, normally with our teams, like as a host, I don't go through every single training that they, they have. But recently we had an experience with someone that did not um she like she wasn't part of the 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 team meetings that we had and all that probably just one i think she attended and but in in like for example her husband was also i found like probably like a week after before the team came that her husband was also on the team and i was like i haven't seen him on on trainings oh he's never been and i was like oh my goodness that sounds like trouble <laughs> so i had to just call it out and say like i'm sorry like it's it's not gonna work out because yeah. it's it's it puts a lot of stress on our side to yeah. be dealing with mm -hmm. it's kind of like having two scenarios two different activities going on because the other person doesn't want to like pitch in or be included on that wants to do another thing so it's like because they don't really understand the activities or they they don't have that clear perspective what they're coming to do so you end up with having like two teams yeah. so yeah. that's i will say that's up to the host if they want to go through that but i would say from my point of view i will I, that was a no <laughs> like i was like sorry but i can't yeah you can always say to someone yeah. you know i'm sorry if you're not going to participate maybe this isn't the right mission opportunity for you <clears throat> right and, and what i hear you saying milton especially is <clears throat> the impact of a person who has not gone through that journey of preparation on the team itself and on the host uh uh the host church or community that receives them is there's a dissonance there that mm -hmm. creates the negative experience of mission for right. everyone. Right. And so it's a case of one person possibly undermining <clears throat> the effectiveness of everything. So, right. uh, and Karen, I think your point is well taken that, you know, after that discussion, after that trying to get them to see the bigger picture, you as the team leader or whoever that might be has the authority to say, you know, I guess, Maybe you're just not going to, uh, you know, this isn't going to work with you being on our team and, and need to say that uh, to protect the experience uh, for, for everyone. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, if I might add, I think the, 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 the biggest picture of all of this is if we want to move away from mission as a time limited experience, as opposed to mission as a lifestyle and part of my ongoing discipleship, we can't afford to keep focused on people uh, who will only see it as an event that they want to participate in and then draw a line under. And everything the two of you have been saying builds on this picture of mission as an ongoing part of my life, whether I'm in Honduras or anywhere else in the world or back home in my own community, I am a Christian who's about God's mission. And, and I think that's a wonderful point to underline. Folk, I don't see any more questions uh, that, are, that are popping up. 
uh, and we're about to wrap this up. So if you want to get in a question, a uh, final one, please do that um, very quickly. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is then uh, in the absence of that or until I see one is just focus on Karen and Milton again and ask them if there's something you haven't shared, if there's something you want to still say, if there's a point you want to underline, I invite you to do that now as a sort of um, closing comment. Uh, Karen, we'll start with you. Great. Um, we've talked a lot about what we do before and during the mission. After the mission is just as important because um, it doesn't end just because you go home. You could take that mission experience and that excitement and that passion that a lot of your team members and you as the team leader, I'm assuming we're all kind of talking with team leaders here, but maybe maybe some team members. How do you take that and 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 translate it into a local experience? How do you continue your mission so that the mission journey that you just went on is not the highlight of your your congregation's mission and outreach program. It's just a part of it. And maybe you were working with the medical team in Honduras and you go home and how do you continue that in your community and keep that excitement and that passion alive? And so maybe you volunteer at a medical clinic in your community or you work with um, Honduran immigrants um, somehow, maybe you do ESL classes or something, but don't let that experience just stop. Mm -hmm. Let it continue and grow. And that will just add to um, everyone's experience. And it will help you recruit future team members and uh, will just add an extra dimension to your mission. Thank you. Milton? Yeah, um, I would just add or mostly like encourage um, teams or volunteers to to continue to engage, whether they already have a, a placement site um, in whatever country they go um, and learn every time they can, because there's always new things that you can learn. Um, we've talked about uh, teams that go there for quite a while but even if if you've been there for like 10 years or whatever you you will feel like there's always something new that you learn after your your trip so just always go with a um a good attitude um an attitude of learning serving um and and just have a great time and um just take the the opportunity that it's being presented because um, it, it can be a life-changing experience. And I say it from a personal perspective because um, just to share a little bit more, um, when I was younger, I thought that at this age, I was going to be doing something different. And here I am <laughs> in, in doing mission and I'm loving it. I love every day that I, I work and uh, with the teams and the communities and and everybody that I, I come across with and we try to do the best we can um, and do it out of love, out of passion, compassion, um, and share God's uh, love and um, just keep that spirit up and that um, that flame on fire <laughs> for for mission. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, uh, Milton, and, and thank you, Karen, for uh, uh, your participation today. And thank you, everybody who, uh, who joined us for this discussion. Um, I, I'm thrilled to see that there are jurisdictional coordinators uh, on, on, on this call, because those are the people in each jurisdiction that you can turn to for guidance and help in preparing uh, for mission. Um, I, I, I'm glad that somebody like uh, David McCormack is on as well, because he represents those others in each jurisdiction who are there to motivate mission. And he's a resource person who can come to your area, your church to, to help you in, uh, be encouraged and, and understand the possibilities that um, both short term missions, covenant relationships uh, and service as missionaries 
at all different levels uh, can be uh, for the enrichment of people's uh, faith journeys, as well as for a church's enrichment uh, in, in connecting itself in mission uh, in an effective way. So uh, I, I appreciate all of you being uh, uh, present today. My thanks to um, Karen and Milton for uh, their work in preparing for this time and offering uh, their ideas and thoughts and experience uh, that's enriched us. And thank you all for joining us today. Um, I would uh, love the opportunity to just send us forth in prayer. So let's pray together. I thank you, Lord, for uh, each person uh, represented on this call, each church, each uh, uh, conference, each jurisdiction, um, and, and the own personal journeys. Uh, and pray that you would continue to broaden us uh, in our uh, understanding of your mission in this world and the best way that we can participate in it. Uh, encourage us each day to continue uh, in being faithful to that mission as you are to us. And particularly today, we pray for Milton uh, and others in a position like his uh, that receive missionaries uh, uh, from other places and the complexities of that in the midst of COVID, uh, keep them encouraged, strengthen them in their work uh, and, and bless all of us in this work with a deeper sensitivity, curiosity, open-mindedness and willingness just to let your spirit take us and lead us uh, in uh, participating with you in this mission to restore the world to the shape in which you made it and for which you long to see it again. May your heart for your mission and your people be our art too, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Go in God's strength and grace and uh, want to hear the stories again. Uh, Thank you, uh, Jeremy. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Milton. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Good to see you, Milton.